I'm Larry Leopold. I'm a Carmelite Spiritual Director talking today as we have been with Dr. James and now launching into it on our own. So Dr. James, you're watching. I'll try and do well. All right, but we're talking today about this next step of Our Lady's experience, her own journey in the gift of the divine will. And so we ask your special graces, Our Lady, dear Mother, help us as you promised to in these wonderful uh, lessons that you've given Louisa to hold our hand and to give us the helps and, and to hold our will so that we are able to follow you who, you, who did it so well. And so we desire you, we desire the divine will, we desire to become one with Jesus. And we ask your grace to do this. We ask it in the divine will, amen, okay? So today, as we uh, explained last week, uh, Our Lady is trying to explain to us through her own life, how this happened in her. And as we said, this is day four in, these in uh, the lessons that she's given to Louisa. And in this time, I, um, the soul is talking to Mary and talking about how happy she is when she comes to Mary, when Mary comes to her. And Louisa expresses that the, in your arms, I spend moments of paradise. I feel happy. Oh, how I sigh to hear your voice. And in it, a new life descends in me. And Mary takes the opportunity to share that, well, the reason you're feeling that, Louisa, you, me, is because it's an echo of the joy that Our Lady is feeling in her own heart, that we're here, that we want to know, that we are looking to follow her, because this is all her desire. It's just all a mother could hope for, as we say in, in our own parlance now, right? To have a child that wants all that God had for her. To be happy and to fulfill her and our destiny. Uh, this is Mary's heart, okay? And so you're feeling her heart if you're enjoying these talks. That's, that's Our Lady having the joy within you, right? You know, it's an interesting thing again, that when we receive this gift of the divine will, we know that Jesus gives it to us. In faith, we know that, right? And he gives it to us so that we can have this joy. However, if Jesus, who is present in us in the divine will, as is the whole Trinity, as Mary is going to tell us very shortly, that Jesus and Mary are one, where Jesus is, Mary's there, Right, right. Mary, Mary's with her little lamb. Okay, so Mary is here with us as well, and she is with Jesus in heaven. So while these moments that we're doing this, it's like being in heaven. So enjoy it. A little break, right? So here we go. She's talking now about how God wanting to tell her, tell us his secrets. He wanted to reveal to us the prodigies of joy that he had in mind for all of us, that he did in Mary and have become her secret. You know the books, The Secrets of Mary. Well, these are the best secrets of what Jesus did in her and wants to do in you and I. And so when she received the the grace of this divine will in her, right? All the prodigies, when the word prodigies means the, the glories, the excesses of love, the manifestations of God's own attributes in her, you know, um, that shine out that all of creation saw, right? Remember the party, right? Everyone knows it except us because <laughs> we're asleep. But now uh, at this point in time, God is extending that gift to us. So it's time to wake up. It's time to party, party, party. You remember the gentleman from years ago. And so if, if we allow this divine will, this lovely divine will to dominate us 
as Mary allowed it through her fiat to dominate her, then we too will not only experience what Mary experienced, but will become like Mary, right? And, and instead of her just being something that we worship like an idol, no, she becomes our model of what God wanted to create for you and I. She's a perfect one. She had all the graces. She had all the gifts in order to become that model. And now through Louisa, those graces are available. Mary's graces and Jesus' graces are available to you and I. Because she allowed the divine will, as she says here, the great, she had the great honor of forming her whole life in the divine will. And that's remarkable. In other words, she never once did her own thing. She never did it her way. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> All right. She did it God's way. So, um, as she said, now we're still in this eternal now moment of conception where all of this is happening, right, in Mary. It's the fourth day, right? And in that time, which there is no time, she's never been separated because all of this happened within the heart of the, the Godhead, right? So she was one with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? And she was never separated and she experienced those dominions so much so that all of their goodness, love, and, and truth reigned in her. And, and the divine persons reigned in her. And they reigned and, and rendered them inseparable. So all of this was still with all the great. They're still popping the balloons and blowing the horns and, and celebrating Mary's queenship over all the creation, over heaven and earth, over all the angels and saints. And bang, the next test comes along. The next step. Now that they had that, they said it was time for the test. And I know that some of you have experienced the test or tests, regard, regardless of who you are. I, uh, Mary was no exception. So if you have a human nature, you will get the test, right? As Jesus had the test. And as we will read here, how Adam had the test and he failed the test. So let's see what Mary did and how this works for her. And why would God want to do a test anyway? He already created her pretty perfect. Why, why a test? And so she says that the test is the flag that speaks of victory. The test places all the goods that God wants to give us in safekeeping. The test matures and disposes the soul for the gains of great conquest. So Mary understood the need for the test, and she wanted to give proof to the Creator with her own act of faithfulness. So it's hard for us sometimes when we hear the word test. You know, uh, sometimes it sounds like uh, almost like a, a judgment, you know, or a, uh, a lack of trust in us, where it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, I think often like uh, how it's similar to when your chi a teenage child wants to drive, okay? And now uh, they want the keys. And you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. First, first we got to go for the driver's test. Now, you never take them to the driver's test until you know that it's good. You know, they have, they have to learn all the rules of the road, how to operate the car, how not to kill anyone, including themselves, before you even allow them the test. So, in a sense, you already trust them a great deal. However, the test is the trust that both disposes them for the responsibility of driving, so that not only you trust them now, but they're recognized by authority, and all authority comes from God, that they're trustworthy, right? And they can give them the keys, and hopefully no one will die, <laughs> right? And the car will come back whole. So driver's tests are a celebration all by themselves. It's, it's like adulthood, 
It's like a, a rite of passage. And so are these tests that God wants in us and that he was giving to Mary. And so Mary, not receiving it as some sort of a, a, a lack of trust or any kind of a slur, uh, recognizing her opportunity to express her gratitude and love for all the graces and trust and love that God has put in her. Right? And so uh, she knew that it would cost her her whole life. But it was an exchange, as she says, for all the seas of graces that he had given her already. And the gift of life for us is an enormous gift. How, how much gratitude do we have for that? All right? He's given us our life. Giving our life back to him is an appropriate thank you and more. She says, how beautiful it is to say, you have loved me and I have loved you. But without the test, it is unable to say that. All right. This is how we say we love you too. Okay. So beyond that, we spoke last week about this divine intelligence, the, uh, the, the mind of God being also bestowed in this gift of the divine will, which grows through degrees, but Mary had perfectly, as Adam had perfectly, right? God, this great restoration gift in her, right? As we said, Adam's back in town, right? And Mary, with this understanding and knowing, which in, in the eternal now she could, she could go back in time as Louisa did, right? The bilocation, trilocation, right? Into the act of God creating Adam. So she could see him fresh out of nothingness, right? Which is what we are too, right? So, but Adam really was made from nothing. And as God breathed life into him, from his own triune nature, those streaming lights of glory that animated the clay that he was. Uh, Adam knew, knew all. He had command over all creation. All the elements were obedient to him. I, he was inseparable from the Trinity, as Mary's experiencing now. He had the fullness of joy, the fullness of goodness, the fullness of happiness, okay? All of that was given to Adam initially in his gift of life. But as this test that was now going to turn over the reins of the dominion over all creation, right? That was his car, <laughs> right? That he was now going to be given the, the mastery over all that God had created. Uh, God wanted to make sure that, that he would do a good job, that he was properly disposed and that he would be faithful and nothing bad would happen, All right? And so the test was given to Adam. This God did to confirm that he was innocent, that he had sanctity and happiness to give him the right of command, that he would be faithful. But Adam was not faithful. Again, he wanted to do it my way, right? And whenever we feel that instance of being slighted, of being rebellious, of, of not wanting people to tell us what to do or how to do it, and, and, and when we hear God you know, calling us to uh, his, his commandments and, and to go goodness and holiness, and, and we just feel like an imposition, that's, that's the seed of evil, of the seed of sin that we have inherited from that initial Adam's rejection of the test. And he rejected it in just that way. He wanted his own will. And as we've said before, when he did that, he broke, he broke his will away from God's will. And in the sense, he broke away from the love that God was so inseparable. Now he was separable. And when he broke away, he broke God's heart. And he broke our hearts. He broke his own heart. Because now he was not with the love of God anymore. And he was alone and lonely. This has been the history of mankind ever since. 
Though Mary, in this flash of understanding and insight, was able to see the grave evil that this human will has inflicted on us. All right? Now, this is a great paradox because our free will is the greatest gift God has given us. And that was the great experiment. All right? But she saw that this, this human will, which had broken from God, needed to now be subjugated back to God's will, domin dominated only by God's will, which for her meant never doing her human will ever in her own life. All right now, you and I, when, when we're asked to do something and be obedient, we feel pretty fine about ourselves if we can do it, right? And we congratulate ourselves, you know, and hope that that doesn't happen again soon. All right. And if we uh, have a spouse and our spouse says, take out the garbage and uh, we don't want to take out the garbage, but we do anyway, then we feel somehow we should be rewarded. <laughs> All right. And that's not the point either, because that's the free will that wants to be rewarded. We got some work to do with this. And so uh, this willingness to be dominated by God and his will, which was so unique and, and remarkable that Mary experienced uh, was proof to God that she was well disposed. And so in as a proof to surrender her human will, the Supreme Fiat said to her, I do not ask of you a fruit as she did with Adam, right? No, no, I ask for your will. You will keep it as if you didn't have it under the dominion and empire of the divine will. So he's not saying there won't be any will. He's saying that it will be one with the divine will and you won't do it your own way anymore. You'll do it his way, right? This will be your life and will feel confident of making make of you whatever it wants whatever the divine will of god wants to make of you is fine with you so you know how often do we make our five-year plans our 10-year plans have our goals for what we want to be and now that has been carried around to even defining ourselves as to who we are and what we are you know by nature you know and we have fallen so far away from god's will that we've lost our reason so this was the fourth step that the divine fiat wanted to take in Mary, waiting for this proof so that she would accept the proof, accept the truth, uh, the test. And we'll find out in our next get together, as Our Lady says, how she did. And she leaves us with this advice, all right, much like um, a mother of the bride, all right, as we are approaching the test. All right, the test is a little bit like the uh, the I do at the wedding. All right, when when a bride comes up the aisle and joins the groom to go through the vows, where she, she promises as he does that there will be no other, only the beloved. All right, and this is the commitment, you know, the that uh, for the rest of my life. All right, so. The mother of the bride wants to encourage the child getting ready to have courage, right? To know that great good will come from it. Many children is the hope, right? And that uh, all goodness and love will flow from her taking this commitment. And the commitment will seal her into the long-term lifetime relationship of happiness, even through the rough times, in sickness and in health, right? And that's similar, right? similar to this first test and again um it's this test disposes us and prepares us much as in when when this seed of the divine will has been planted in us we want to make sure like a seed in your garden that the soil is prepared that you've tested it for the ph level right that you've prepared it with whatever nutrients and fertilizers are appropriate to the plant so that as you place that seed there and add the sun and the water, 
it'll grow and it'll be healthy and it'll bear much fruit. All right. So this is test is God's gardening us, husbanding us, which is the old word for being a gardener, right? To make sure that you bear much fruit. So as as you experience this test coming up, may it uh, somehow connect with you and your test. Until until then, Our Lady just admonishes us that uh, just don't follow your human will and all will be well, right? And know that she is there to help us, right? Because we all know how hard it is not to do our own will. But she is our ace in the hole. <laughs> She's our divine gift to hold our human will for us so that we don't take it back and that we pass the test. So for that, Our Lady, we thank you. We praise you for the great gifts you've received from God and for your fidelity to him and for the graces that you've been now, not only the great grace of being the mother of Jesus, our savior, but now the great grace of helping us to become like you, kings and queens in your court, which we know as we will read, that what you want, and we want to be your companion in heaven as well. So as we, as we say yes to you, Lord, we ask that this fiat uh, allow this grace in us, this divine gift, to flower and become healthy. And like a sunflower burst out with those yellow uh, petals that look like rays of the sun to take that uncreated light of grace all over the world till finally your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So until next time, fiat.